talk to nearly anyone who is familiar with the topic of the flat earth and the Bible and you will eventually hear the quote from Isaiah 40 22 It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. For many globe earth proponents, this proves that the earth is spherical in shape. While at first glance, this scripture may seem pretty straightforward, much debate has centered around the meaning of the Hebrew word, chug. According to Rob Skiba, of TestingTheGlobe.com the Hebrew word, chug, that is translated as circle is actually used in so many places to mean a sphere. It's a three-dimensional circle. One other person who agrees with Rob Skiba is Philip Stallings, of the Biblical Flat Earth Society. According to Mr. Stallings, if the Earth were a ball, and God wished to communicate that here, then it would have required using the Hebrew word dur, pronounced dur. The Hebrew definition for dur is, a circle, pile, or ball. Isn't that interesting? If the shape of the Earth was intended to be conveyed as a ball then the Hebrew word dur would have been the word used as found in Isaiah 22:18. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country, there shalt thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. It wasn't used there. What we were given instead was the Hebrew word kug. I believe that to truly understand this text, we would need to ask ourselves, what was the current understanding that most Hebrews had about the shape of the earth? It is doubtful that any Hebrew would support a globe earth perspective since the majority of Hebrew literature described the earth as flat earth and none rotating. Regarding the flat earth, the following scriptures bear witness, and upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and will scatter them toward all those winds, and there shall be no nation whither the outcasts of Elam shall not come. Jeremiah 49:36 Also, thou son of man, Thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, an end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Ezekiel 7 colon 2 The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. Daniel 4 11 It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Isaiah 40 22 Regarding the earth being immovable, and the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and haste not to go down about a whole day. Joshua 10 13 Fear before him, all the earth, the world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. 1 Chronicle 16 30 The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty, the Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself, the world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Psalms 93 say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be established that it shall not be moved, he shall judge the people righteously. Psalms 96 10 who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Psalms 1045 It is interesting that the majority of scripture overwhelmingly speak of the earth as flat, fixed, and non-spherical. Most people would not care if it were not for the scientific community pushing another image of the earth, an image that totally rejects the creation account of Genesis. I believe that what really lies at the heart of this debate, is a need to make the word of God line up with science. As if, somehow, by gaining the approval of the scientific community, the Bible becomes more credibility. With such reasoning, then one has to wonder are we resting our confidence in the word of man, or God? Yeah.